Percy Jackson has so many cool characters, locations, prophecies, and weapons, all of which I plan to make videos on. But for today's video, we're going to focus on the main hero's weapon known as Riptide. In this video, I'm going to explain its origins, its history, and its previous owners. Before we start, there are going to be spoilers for all Rick Riordan books, so you have been warned. Now, let's get this video started. Riptide, or as it's known in Greek, Anoklosmos, is of course very well known to Percy Jackson fans, being the sword that Percy used throughout all of Rick Riordan's books. But before it belonged to Percy, according to Chiron, the sword had a long and tragic history. The sword is made of celestial bronze. This means that the metal in which Riptide was made was mined by the Cyclops from Mount Olympus. The Cyclops took the metal to Mount Etna, a volcano on the east coast of Sicily, Italy. There, they dipped it in the lava and shaped the sword to what we see it as now. After putting it in the lava, they cooled it in the River Lethe, otherwise known as the River of Forgetfulness, because a mere drop from the river can make someone forget their whole identity. All of these steps to make the sword celestial bronze made the sword emit a faint golden glow. Once the sword was forged, because it was celestial bronze, it was deadly to creatures of the magical world, both monsters and immortals. If Riptide is used to kill a monster, the metal will disperse the monster's physical form into dust and send it to Tartarus. It can harm demigods as well because of their blood, but the sword cannot harm mortals. It will merely pass right through them like an illusion. Chiron explained this saying that they simply aren't important enough for the blade to kill. Riptide was a medium-length Xyphos, which in Greek means one-handed, double-edged sword. It had a leather-wrapped grip and a flat hilt riveted with gold studs. The sword drew its power from the ocean, meaning it worked especially well for ocean spirits and children of Poseidon like Percy. However, it was not made by Poseidon the way the movie said. The sword drawing its power from the ocean is the only relation to Poseidon that the sword has. As I said, if we go by the books, which we always do, it was forged by the Cyclops that reside in Mount Olympus. One of the sword's main powers was the fact that it always returned to the owner even if it fell away from the hero or was lost in battle. We saw this with Percy as it would always return to his pocket after dropping the weapon. The first owner of Riptide that we know of was Pleione in ancient times. She was the wife of the Titan Atlas, who would later be famous for his eternal punishment of holding the sky up. But Pleione had her own special connection with the sword because she was a daughter of the ocean, and as I said earlier, Riptide draws its power from the ocean. It's unknown how long she was in possession of Riptide, but we do know that she eventually passed it down to her daughter Zoe Nightshade. Zoe tended the Garden of Hesperides alongside her sisters, caring especially for Hera's tree of golden apples and the monstrous dragon Laidon, who guarded it. Since the day her mother passed Riptide down to her, she kept Riptide with her in a very sneaky way. The sword was made to take the form of a hair clip when it was not being used, much like it took the form of a pen during the time that Percy had it. One day, though, she met the hero Hercules, and she helped him complete his quest to get a golden apple from Hera's tree, the very tree that she had sworn to guard. She originally told Hercules that he could not complete the quest with Laden there, but Hercules asked Zoe to betray her father and her sisters to help him. She was agonizing over the decision, but she agreed when she took the hairpin she was wearing out of her hair, which was of course Riptide, and breathed on it, which made it faintly glow. She told Hercules to take it and make of it a weapon, but Hercules laughed, asking how a hairpin would slay Laden. She responded saying that it may not, but that it was all she could offer, and she called him out for acting stubborn. When Hercules took the hairpin, it grew longer and heavier until it took its celestial bronze form. Hercules said that the sword was well balanced, and then asked what he should name it, but Zoe said it already had a name, Anoklosmus, meaning the current that takes one by surprise, because before you know it, you have been swept out to sea by the riptide. Hercules ended up failing to defeat Laden with Riptide, but he still completed his quest when Zoe again betrayed her family and told Hercules how to trick her father to get a golden apple. Zoe was exiled for this, and she received no credit for the quest. Hercules took all the credit for himself, abandoning Zoe to her painful fate, and he took the sword as well, adopting it as his own. As a result, Zoe came to hold a grudge against male heroes, especially ones that reminded her of Hercules, and she joined the Hunters of Artemis, swearing men off. As we know, Hercules was trained by Chiron, who in Percy's days was the camp director of Camp Half-Blood. Because of this, the logical conclusion of how Chiron ended up with Riptide is that Hercules either gave him the sword, or he left the sword, which Chiron then took into his possession. 
Either way, after Zoe lost possession of the sword, it was made to take the form of a pen instead of a hairpin when not being used. A much more manly thing to have for a male hero than a hairpin. The sword now opened when the cap of the pen came off, and when the cap went back on, the sword went back in. In the movie though, they messed this up, having the sword come out when you simply click the pen. How and when it went from being a hairpin to a pen is unknown, but there are a few possibilities. One is that it's likely Hercules made this transition from hair clip to pen so he wouldn't be seen with the hair clip at all times. Two, it's also quite possible that Chiron was the one to make it a pen, and maybe Hercules made it his own dormant object when Reptide was not being used that was neither a hair clip nor a pen. Or three, it's possible that Hercules never figured out how to change it from a hair clip, and that's why he gave it up so easily to Chiron, again, not wanting to be seen with a hair clip at all times. Chiron was in possession of Riptide for some time, and when a satyr named Grover found an especially powerful young demigod, Chiron not only intervened to watch the boy named Percy, but he brought Riptide with him just in case the boy needed a weapon. When they went on a field trip, that day came when Percy was attacked by a fury, and Chiron entered, threw the sword to Percy, and Percy used it to cut the fury down. Afterwards, though, Chiron acted as though nothing had happened, and he had Percy give the pen back, saying to bring his own writing utensil next time. After Percy was revealed to be a demigod who was claimed by Poseidon, Chiron gifted Percy Riptide before his first quest. After Percy had trained for weeks with different swords, none of them had the correct balance for him, but when he held Riptide, it was the first weapon that actually balanced well in his hand. And this is of course because the sword draws its power from the ocean, meaning it works extremely well for Percy who is the son of the sea god. Before leaving for the quest, Chiron and Percy tested the sword coming back, and when Percy threw it as far as he could down the hill, it appeared back in his pocket moments later like it would do so many more times in the future. Percy had Riptide with him through many adventures, using it to kill Medusa, cutting her head off, using it to fight the God of War Ares, a battle that he actually won, and in the Sea of Monsters, he used it to fight Luke, a fight in which he was disarmed and beaten, but luckily he was saved by Chiron and the Party Ponies. Going back to his fight with Ares though, the furious God of War cursed Riptide so that Percy's sword would fail him when he needed it most. Zoe Nightshade was reunited with the sword that caused her so much turmoil when she met Percy. Percy had a dream about Zoe giving the sword to Hercules, and afterwards, Percy pulled the sword out in front of Zoe, and this made her have a pained expression. Percy asked if she made it, and she told him that she did not, as it was a gift from her mother, and she then explained how Hercules, though she refused to say his name out loud, ignored the help she gave him, giving Zoe no credit after she had lost everything to do so. During the final fight in the third book, Percy fought the Titan Atlas, but the curse that Ares put on Percy's sword, saying that Riptide would fail him when he needed it most, came into effect, and the sword became incredibly heavy. So heavy, in fact, that Percy could not lift it, meaning he had to drop the sword and hold the sky in place to allow Artemis to fight Atlas instead. During the fight, Zoe was struck down by her father Atlas when protecting Artemis, and some of her last words were about Riptide. As she was dying, she asked Percy if he had the sword. Percy pulled Riptide out, and she said that Percy was nothing like Hercules, and she told him that she was honored that he carried the sword now. Percy had Riptide with him as he traveled through the labyrinth, and he fought off many threats with it. In The Last Olympian, Percy finally heard the Great Prophecy, and he thought that the Cursed Blade mentioned was Riptide due to the curse that Ares put on it after their fight, but the Cursed Blade turned out to be Annabeth's knife. And again, the movies messed this up, saying that Percy's sword was the sword in the prophecy. But we don't go by the crappy movies, we go by the books. Percy had his sword for the Heroes of Olympus series as well, and after Hera made him lose his memory, he woke up with Riptide next to him. A few times, he was able to use the sword to stab the ground, causing cracks in the earth. Once he did this and destroyed the Williamsburg Bridge, and another time, he did this to destroy the fake Roman camp in Alaska. He used it on his many missions in the Heroes of Olympus, to fight the Giants, once to fight Jason when they were both possessed, and he used it to protect himself and Annabeth in the pits of Tartarus. While in Tartarus, they actually discovered that Riptide could be used as a real pen, which was a detail that I always loved. Percy also had Riptide when he came face to face with Magnus Chase and Carter Kane. He used Riptide to kill a crocodile Carter was hunting, which Carter was not too thrilled about, saying that the crocodile was his to kill. He also used Riptide while training Magnus for his quest. Then, in the Trials of Apollo, we saw him use it a few times, once to even protect Meg and Apollo from evil spirits. 
Riptide might have belonged to some great heroes like Hercules and Zoe Nightshade, but the sword will always be seen as Percy's sword because he accomplished so much with it. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just here to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed to the left. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other things like previews and behind the scenes, become a patron today. Also, you can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki. I also do some fun stuff on TikTok and Twitter that I think you guys would really enjoy if you enjoy what I do here on this channel. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe, and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.